Corn free, cancer free and a space safe food? Some of these things just aren't true about your favourite corned beef. Despite its name, corned beef has nothing to do with corn. Instead, the term was used by the British in the 17th century to refer to the salt crystals, which were the size of corn kernels, used to cure the meat. While corned beef was originally cured by rubbing salt into the meat, today the process involves a salt brine. That's good news since the process lets manufacturers add more than just salt to the recipe. Different brines use mustard seeds, coriander seeds and peppercorns, which all add to the flavour of the final product. While the British coined the term corned beef in the 17th century, the Irish were using salt crystals to preserve meat way back in the Middle Ages. The dish is first mentioned in the 12th century Gaelic poem, The Vision of Mac Congolin, as a luxury item given to the king. There's also a 14th century English recipe for ache, which is likely the predecessor of today's hash. The rectangular corned beef can we know today was patented in Chicago by Arthur A. Libby in 1875. However, canned corned beef didn't become popular in America until World War II, when it was distributed to households as a food supplement. Today, canned corned beef cans are found on supermarket shelves across the US. Notably, Libby's is still one of the favourites. Served with cabbage across the US on St. Patrick's Day, it's not hard to see why corned beef is thought of as a traditional Irish food. However, traditional St. Patrick's Day feasts in Ireland actually consist of bacon and cabbage, since historically, beef was way out of the price range of the common folk. Where's the beef? Even today, the only restaurants in Ireland that serve corned beef and cabbage on St. Patrick's Day are the ones that cater to tourists. So how did Ireland become associated with corned beef? Traditionally, cows in Ireland were used for dairy production and field work and only slaughtered when they got too old to work. This changed in the 17th century after the enactment of the British Cattle Acts, which prohibited the import of live cattle into Britain. With farmers forced to slaughter cows and preserve beef with salt before exporting it, Ireland became the centre for corned beef production. The fact that the salt tax in Ireland was around one-tenth of England's only helped to spur the industry. Canned corned beef is very different from the corned beef you may find at your local deli. Canned corned beef is cured in brine and contains many preservatives and additives to preserve its shelf life. Deli corned beef, on the other hand, is a cured or pickled brisket that's later cut into pieces. Deli corned beef originated among America's Jewish community, who ate it as a kosher substitute for spam, which contained pork. When Irish immigrants started coming to America during the Great Irish Potato Famine in the mid-1800s, they found the beef to be more more affordable than in their home country. Soon, they started buying corned beef from Jewish butchers as a substitute for the bacon and ham they were accustomed to eating in Ireland. There's little doubt that corned beef is a hit in the US and Europe. However, over the years, the canned food has also earned fans in the Philippines and Jamaica. The widespread popularity of canned corned beef can be attributed to Britain and France, which distributed the food to their colonies in the Americas, Africa and Asia. The presence of the American military in the Philippines led the Southeast Asian country to incorporate canned foods such as corned beef and spam into local dishes. For example, one of the country's most popular breakfast recipes is corn silog, a concoction of corned beef, fried egg and garlic rice. Food and culture writer Bettina Macalental, who moved from the Philippines to the US when she was a child, wrote in Vice that Corned beef is something I can't disassociate from the simple pleasures of my childhood breakfasts. For me, it's only ever paired with the smell of sizzling garlic, the steam that billows out of the rice cooker and the crackle of eggs frying in a pan deep with oil. The idea that the US is a major manufacturer of canned corned beef is a misconception. While historically Ireland was the leading producer of corned beef, South America took the honours sometime around the outbreak of World War II. Fray Bentos in Uruguay became the major producer of the food in the first half of the 20th century, exporting 16 million cans of corned beef in 1943 alone. Today, Brazil produces 80% of the world's canned corned beef supply, mainly due to its vast swaths of land for cattle grazing. Unfortunately, cattle production is also currently the top contributor for deforestation in the country. In 2017, the world's largest beef producer, JBC, was fined $8 million for the illegal destruction of the Amazon rainforest. 
Also in 2017, the Jamaican government banned imports of Brazilian corned beef after an investigation found that several meat producers were selling spoiled meat. While it's safe to eat corned beef straight out of the tin, it may not be the most satisfying experience. Since the beef is preserved in brine with salt crystals, corned beef tends to be very salty if left uncooked. Simmering corned beef in water can leach out a lot of the salt, highlighting the pleasantly meaty taste. There are plenty of canned corned beef recipes out there bound to tickle your fancy. Aside from classics like corned beef hash, other popular concoctions include corned beef and eggs, corned beef with enoki mushrooms, and canned corned beef with zucchini, olives and peppers. The seasoning usually added to these recipes help mask any remaining saltiness in the corned beef. You can serve corned beef with sauerkraut or pickles, since anything tart also masks salt. Canned corned beef can be a decent source of vitamins and minerals. 3 ounces of corned beef is packed with 15 grams of protein, 1.6 micrograms of vitamin B12, 1.86 milligrams of iron, and 27.9 micrograms of the antioxidant selenium. However, canned corned beef also contains several unhealthy ingredients. Oh my god! The brine salt used to tenderize the meat leaves the beef full of sodium. A three ounce portion is loaded with 827 milligrams of sodium and 83 milligrams of cholesterol. Most canned corned beef also contains the preservative sodium nitrate, which has been linked to cancer and health risks during pregnancy. In 2015, the Cancer Research Agency at the World Health Organization classified processed meats, like canned corned beef, a Group 1 carcinogen that is likely to cause cancer in humans. To make matters worse, the agency also classified red meat as a Group 2 carcinogen, which is probably carcinogenic to humans. Canned corned beef and Spam have a lot in common. They're both pre-cooked and processed, served in rectangular cans and safe to eat straight out of the tin. They also both look like a gelatinous pink meaty mass. But there's one thing that sets the two foods apart. Corned beef is made with beef, while Spam is made with pork. There's no mystery behind Spam. It's always been made with six simple ingredients. Launched in 1937, Spam is made with pork, salt, water, potato starch, sugar and sodium nitrate. Spam tends to have a smoother texture than corned beef and is commonly used on sandwiches, while corned beef often features in stir-fries and casseroles. Canned corned beef usually comes in rectangular cans that are opened with an attached key. To open the can, you insert the tin's metal tab into the small slot in the accompanying key. The key is then rolled around the can, pulling the tab and separating the tin in two parts. Since cans of corned beef are opened on the side rather than the top, a missing or broken key could pose a problem. Luckily, a can opener can open a tin of corned beef. First, use a large can opener with a comfortable handle for a steady grip. Next, if the top of the can is smaller than the bottom, open it at the bottom end. This makes it easier to move around the can's corners. After opening it, use the can opener to make a couple of holes on the other end of the can. This helps the meat slide out the can easier. Don't have a can opener handy? You can always use a pair of pliers to grip the tab and slowly peel the strip off the can. Canned corned beef may look pink, but it would actually be grey without one crucial ingredient – sodium nitrate. While this food additive preserves the meat and helps to inhibit bacteria to keep us safe from food poisoning, the chemical has been linked to numerous health problems. As we mentioned earlier, regular consumption of cured meats like corned beef, ham and bacon has been connected to an increased risk of cancer, even by the Cancer Treatment Centers of America. You can buy corned beef that hasn't been cured with sodium nitrate, sometimes referred to as New England corned beef. This meat isn't treated with preservatives and receives a natural saltwater brining process, which leaves it with a grey colour. Canned corned beef was once at the centre of an out-of-this-world scandal. On March 23, 1965, astronaut John Young smuggled a corned beef sandwich onto the Gemini 3 in the pocket of his spacesuit. Young offered the sandwich to the mission commander Virgil Gus Grissom around two hours into the five-hour exploratory mission. Seemingly aware of the potential dangers, Grissom promptly stowed the contraband gift in his own spacesuit pocket. While taking the corned beef sandwich into space was supposed to be a joke, many were concerned that any free-floating food particles, including crumbs of corned beef, could have had dire consequences on the spacecraft. 
After all, there's a good reason why NASA was supplying its astronauts with gelatin-coated food cubes at the time. Since part of the Gemini 3 mission was testing space food, Young's joke didn't go down very well with the US government. Young recalls the experience in his memoirs Forever Young, saying, A couple of congressmen became upset, thinking that, by smuggling in the sandwich and eating part of it, Gus and I had ignored the actual space food that we were up there to evaluate, costing the country millions of dollars. 